<laughs> Three, two, one, go. Hello, I'm Dr. Barry Sadler. Today, we're gonna to install a Dura mileage module on a new 2016 Ford. Um, I got the module in my hand. There's a female and male connector. We're gonna show you where to plug these in and what location at. We get a lot of questions on our tech calls, uh, them being hard. The first thing I wanna let you know is they shellac the original module. So this portion here, where you have to push down, it's hard to push down and pull it out at the same time. We're going to show you where the sensor is, and sometimes it'd be easier to just take a pair of short nose pliers, reach in and lightly squeeze it, and then pull it out with pliers, because it's hard to pinch with your finger when it's shellacked, the cover with the coating. This one won't be that hard. And then we'll give you a place to relocate this module to keep it away from the engine heat. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look down between the intercooler intake boot and the radiator hose. I mean, sorry, right here, the intercooler intake boot and the radiator hose. And you can see a module down there. See where the, um, the pressure sensor is. And we'll go right there. There's your pressure sensor. Okay, so that's what we're going to plug into. And it looks like this connection on this one is underneath. It's going the other way. So I have to put my hand underneath it and pull it up. It depends on the clockwise of the plug on how you do it. So I'm going to reach down there and get that unclipped and then we'll clip the other one in and go over how to go about it. Big arms don't help, that's for sure. This one's going to be difficult because of the portion underneath. Okay, got it unplugged. Try to push on the bottom and the top. We're going to go ahead and get a light back down there so you can see where I unplugged it. And you can see right there where it's unplugged now from the sensor. Okay, so now we're going to take one portion of this. We're going to come in back behind the intercooler tube and plug into that sensor. Now the sensor has an arrow on it. So this arrow is going to go towards the locking cap. Okay, you can't plug it in backwards. We're going to go over that. This portion here on the wire to wire. This has a prong. It's got two on top and the two bottom have been shaved. So this cannot be plugged in backwards. We'll plug this into the sensor first. Into the sensor down there. And then we'll plug the wire to wire in and go over how we can plug that in backwards if we're not careful. Okay, and there I'm going to push till it clicks. There's a click. Let's get back down there and look at it again. See the new wire is plugged in to the sensor right there. There's the other wire we haven't plugged into right there. So we're going to take the other side of this wire that's down there. We're going to plug it into that now. Now this can be plugged in backwards, so you have to make sure that the wire where the locking tab is, the arrow goes to the locking tab. So can you see that down there? So right there, the locking tab, the arrow goes towards that locking tab, right there, and it squeezes. So there's our arrow, which is on this side. There's the arrow, so we're gonna that's going to connect on the locking tab side of the other plug. So right there is a locking tab side that we push. You can see it. Now this can be plugged in the opposite way. It can be plugged in either this way or this way, but you'll remember that this arrow goes to the locking tab. And right there is the locking tab. See, there's the pinch tab on top. So the arrow is going to go towards the pinch tab.
It's already locked in. Didn't take much. So I'm going to back my hand out and see where it's plugged in now. Right there. To the locking tab, strike with the arrow. Okay. So, let me check that. It just clicked right in. So easy. I don't even know. Okay, let's start it. Okay, we're going to take this. This actually, when we plug this in, should have been under this side, but I did it for convenience. So basically, we're going to come in from this side, and then this will be set over here by the by the deal. Let's see if I can snake it over there. I don't know if I can now. So this we set over here by this fender tab right here. Now we sell some. Uh, we sell some little tie straps. This is a cooler tube, so we recommend just putting it over here and you can tie strap it back to this to keep it on top of the, the, the fuse holder. That's usually the best place for it. It keeps it out of every, everything's way. Okay. Sometimes you can get check engine lights because the sensor itself uh, will know you unplugged it so the check engine light can come on. It usually goes back off because it knows we did have something unplugged because the ECM has its own battery. We didn't want to wait for hours for the power down but a lot of times it doesn't come on and, it, and if it does it usually goes back out. The main thing is is we take a pulse of exhaust fuel dumping in the exhaust out of it so our NOx or our NGT is lower so basically the NOx sensor has to adjust for that. These have a run adaptive chip in them, so the more you drive it, the more it tunes itself for better mileage and more economy because you're not dumping raw fuel in the exhaust like the existing system. 